Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Robertson. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Harbor Authority and uh, really grateful for all of you uh, joining uh, us from wherever you are. Uh, I'm in our office. Uh, we have started a soft opening uh, of our office uh, with safety protocols in place. So I'm hanging out in one of our meeting rooms. Just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, we are utilizing the Zoom uh, uh, application. And so I would ask that you uh, provide me with your questions using the Q&A taskbar as opposed to chat. Uh, we are recording this and uh, once this is done, we'll put it up on, uh, on YouTube for everyone to access. So uh, I'm going to go through an update on, uh, on us and our operations and then I'm going to throw it open for a Q&A and uh, we'll go from there. We've got a full house, which is fantastic. So uh, I think we'll try this again. So again, uh, bear with us. Uh, I'm gonna try and prove the theory wrong. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And so uh, I think we'll have some fun with this. So just to start off, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody and um, to also acknowledge uh, that we are on the traditional territory of the Songhean Nation. And there we go. Um, we are honored to steward these properties with both these partners uh, that are members of our board. A little bit about us. Um, we are a not-for-profit organization. And as you've probably heard me say in the media, um, that 70% uh, of our revenues are generated uh, by crews. And with the loss of crews, it certainly uh, has had a significant impact upon our business. But that said, we're continuing to keep as many of our operations open as possible. And um, uh, Fisherman's Wharf has been busier than ever. And so uh, we are doing everything we can to ensure that those properties remain open and accessible. So, um, I'm just having a little trouble here with the trouble with the technology. And uh, just having a bit of a challenge. There we go. Go get this figured out. Wanted to start off showing you um, our staff. And uh, for the last uh, about 10 weeks, our office has been shut down and we've been making the best of things uh, from working from home. And I'm really grateful for all of the staff for being flexible and figuring out how to make it work as they work from home. In terms of where we're at right now, um, as you can see, uh, Transport Canada on March the 13th suspended uh, crews in Canada till July 1, and we are waiting on uh, word from Transport Canada whether this will be extended. As I mentioned, uh, we all started working from home on, uh, on March 17th, and our operations staff uh, began to uh, work on the front line maintaining essential services. On April the 3rd, uh, we had to take the very difficult decision to lay off about 47% of our staff, 23 staff to be specific, and they are temporarily laid off. Uh, around the April-May period, we started to see uh, cruise lines cancel several calls uh, for the 2020 season. And uh, here we are bringing us up to May the 19th. And, uh, and uh, we are working uh, from the office with uh, safety protocol measures in place. So running an operation 24-7 uh, is not without its challenges. And I'm really grateful uh, to all of our operations and maintenance team that are keeping our properties safe. As you can see, uh, we've had some uh, significant increase in vandalism uh, that we've had to address. And uh, I'm just grateful for our team keeping these properties open. We have uh, float homeowners that are living on our properties. We have uh, moorage clients that continue to use our marinas. So it's very important for us to maintain our operations on a 24 seven basis. And uh, again, I'm really grateful for the job that everyone is doing. I thought I'd give you a look at our financial projections and the numbers don't look good. Uh, on the far left, you can see that we were projecting to have another strong year, uh, just over $18 million in revenue. And uh, at the last forecast, uh, we're expected to see that drop significantly to just over $4 million. Uh, we've been able to trim our expenses by 50%. 
And as you can see, um, we're going to go from seeing a cash surplus of just over $3 million to seeing a deficit of around $3 million. So obviously that provides some challenges for us as an organization. And we're very mindful of the fact that we're not the only ones that are faced with the significant financial hardship. Um, I, I can tell you that um, we've had some very strong years and we've been able to uh, keep some uh, cash reserves. And so we'll be drawing upon our cash situation to help sustain the organization through uh, until next year when, uh, when I do have some optimism about the return of our main revenue source and that being cruise. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, in terms of uh, what we've been doing to help support our clients, uh, for our tenants on our properties, uh, we've deferred uh, rent uh, uh, April, May, and June, and we're going to push that out till 2021. Originally, we had deferred April, May into July and September of this year, but after giving this more thought, uh, I came to the conclusion that we needed to give some runway and some time for our clients to get back into business next year in order for them to, uh, to uh, come back and be able to pay us back on the rent. Uh, we've been working hard to keep our customers informed uh, through our website and, uh, and weekly notifications. And again, you know, I'm sure there's other areas that we can, we can improve upon. And if you've got suggestions on how we can improve our communication, please let us know. Um, just today, the Prime Minister announced more details regarding the rent relief program. And uh, we are uh, looking at those details. And uh, we know that we're in a position to qualify. So if you are a tenant on our properties and you've got an agreement with us, um, just give us a bit of time and we'll be rolling out the details as to how this will impact you. And uh, I would encourage you to keep checking back to our website because that's where we're keeping all of our information uh, live and in place. So I talked a little bit about crews. Uh, it's obviously 70% of our revenue and it allows us to fund and sustain many of the community amenities uh, that Victoria residents and visitors love and enjoy. So uh, as we know, Cruise is under the jurisdiction of Transport Canada. And what we know is sailings are suspended until July 1. As we speak, we still have 67 calls on our schedule, predominantly made up of uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines and, uh, and Royal Caribbean. Those two lines uh, are hopeful uh, that they may see uh, some sort of an Alaska season. And uh, I remain optimistic that that may be the case. But as I said, uh, we are waiting for announcement from uh, Transport Canada. But that said, um, I have prepared the organization for what I call a worst case scenario. And that is that we are not anticipating any crews in 2020. And that's how we've updated and reflecting uh, this organization and our financial projections. Crew schedule will always continue to be updated. And so uh, quite honestly, right now, our focus is on planning ahead for the 21 season. In terms of major projects, uh, we were able to complete the Marine Dolphin and I'm very grateful for the teams that worked on that to get that done. We are moving ahead, continuing to move ahead with our shore power business case and feasibility. And we've been partnering with Moffat and Nickel to get that done. And um, I'm hoping that come the fall, we'll have a full report back from them. You may be wondering, uh, with our significant loss in revenue, why we decided to continue with the shore power feasibility. And uh, we felt it was important for the long-term sustainability of crews, both from an environmental perspective, a social perspective, and an economic perspective. And that was a commitment that we made to mayor and council and to the residents that we would get this done and we are going to continue moving ahead on that. We're also gonna take this opportunity while we have some time to continue with uh, facility condition assessments on all our properties. We've been able to do them on most of our inner harbor properties. Um, and uh, we're gonna, looking forward to moving ahead with getting this work completed down to the breakwater district. And we continue with our environmental commitment around uh, Green Marine and our certification. Um, I'll just touch upon our different facilities and give you a quick update. So Fisherman's Wharf uh, has been one of our busiest properties. Uh, three operators remained open through the early days of COVID-19. 
And uh, just this past weekend, we've seen more and more open up. And so uh, we are working with the operators, with the float home community, to ensure that we can maintain physical distancing. Um, we do know we have residents down there that are down there 24 seven. And so we'll, uh, we'll work with them to find that, to find that balance. It obviously important for us to support our commercial businesses and uh, we've got signage in place and we are going to be increasing the staffing levels. Fortunately, uh, due to the wage subsidy program being extended now till the end of August, that gives us an opportunity to, uh, to bring some staff back uh, to help us with those operations down there. In terms of uh, Inner Harbour Marinas, uh, again, uh, continues to be uh, very busy. And as I look out just uh, where we are right now, our marinas are uh, well over half full. And uh, while we are not able to welcome American boaters, we're still seeing a lot of our winter rich customers continue on. And so what that means is we still have to obviously ensure that these facilities are clean and that they're safe and that we have the staff on board uh, to welcome and to, uh, to sustain our customers that are down there. So uh, we are working closely with the Coast Guard and uh, to ensure that uh, uh, safety is, is maintained uh, down at these facilities. Uh, Steamship Terminal is also a property that we are responsible for. Uh, we closed the doors in March uh, after pretty much all of our tenants had decided to close their business. And right now we are just having staff maintain essential services and emergency services. And the reopening of this facility will probably happen uh, when the provincial government opens, uh, opens things back up again. So we're watching this uh, very, very closely and we'll work with our tenants uh, uh, on the, on, in this property. In terms of the Ogden Point breakwater, today was a good day at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, we opened up the breakwater and yeah, there were probably five or six people that were eager to, uh, to get back out on the breakwater. We've got signage in place to enforce and to really reinforce to everyone social distancing, single file on the right. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll keep a close eye on this and, um, and, and ensure that uh, the people using this facility are adhering to the guidelines we've laid out. And quite honestly, if we get a sense that things aren't working, uh, we may have to take the decision to close it down again. So we'll watch this very closely. But we thought it was really important to get this facility opened back up again for everyone uh, to enjoy. Uh, Inner Harbor, uh, Lower Causeway and Ship Point. Uh, we had significant plans to enhance the activity down at the Lower Causeway uh, through our Inner Harbor summer lineup. And uh, with all things, we've had to put this on hold and most likely cancel for this season due to COVID-19. Uh, however, uh, we are maintaining uh, waste removal and cleaning. And uh, as I mentioned at the outset, you know, we've had some security and uh, vandalism issues. And so that continues to uh, be a significant challenge for us. Um, and we're closely monitoring um, the situation down at these facilities. So in terms of uh, what's next, I think I can tell you that um, there is a degree of optimism around crews for 2021. Uh, I know that right now, you know, Cruz has kind of been the poster child for COVID-19, and I think uh, some of it is unfortunate. Um, however, it is what it is. Um, but talking to the cruise lines and talking to various agents, um, we're optimistic about the fact that Cruz can return in 21. Uh, quite frankly, I'm of mixed minds around whether uh, the port should be reopened in, on July 1. There's a part of me that understands the economic benefit, but more importantly, as I've always maintained, the safety of our residents is the number one priority. And so while it could be a very tough situation for us and all of the businesses that rely on cruise, uh, I wouldn't be terribly disappointed to see cruise take a pause for 2020 to allow the cruise lines to get their safety um, actions in place and I can tell you from talking to the cruise lines they are working very very hard on safety protocols and it will also give us a chance to see how cruise responds in the fall and winter 
uh, with other ports that they may enter and to see what we can learn from that and put in place for next year. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I know the cruise lines will, will only come back when they believe it's safe to do so. And I have tremendous confidence in the federal government and the leaders that have been leading us through this situation to give us the direction around when it is safe to open up the ports. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say in terms of moving forward. Uh, I just want to underscore that, uh, you know, it sounds like an overused word, but you know, there's been no playbook for this and we're just trying to have to, we're all working hard to kind of get through this as, as much as possible. So with that, I think what I'll do is I will pause and now I'll turn to some of the questions that are coming up on, uh, on through the Q&A. Um, one of the questions coming up from uh, Fisherman's Wharf, it says uh, around Fisherman's Wharf residents are closed to the public, uh, pump out facility is open, are there, and there are no barriers or signage. Will, be this, will this be addressed in the future? And the answer is yes. Um, when I was down there, um, uh, I understand that uh, we did have some barriers in place. And I also was aware of the fact that we had a situation uh, over the weekend where someone did take some takeout and, and move themselves down to the area that's uh, used by our float home owners. So um, I can tell you that watching the operations down at Fisherman's Wharf is a top priority and we'll we'll make adjustments uh, as we as we need to um so in terms of another question are there any plans to do more improvements in the area uh that would enhance and i think we're open to this and we're looking at all of these opportunities uh again i'm grateful for the the wage subsidy program uh, to be extended through till the end of August because that will allow us to look at perhaps bringing back some staff uh, and to help us with some uh, with some maintenance uh, that may be required. And uh, so while we're waiting for uh, a few other questions to come in, uh, I know that uh, some people again are probably wondering around crews and. Uh, and in talking to the cruise lines, uh, I hear consistently, not just through the cruise lines, but also through the travel agency community, that uh, Alaska could be one of the first itineraries that could bounce back. And uh, the reasons for that is Alaska is seen as being very safe and secure. Uh, and you know what? Cruisers are very, very loyal. And in talking to some of the local travel agents, I think we've all been quite surprised by the fact uh, that there is a significant, still some pent up demand for people to get back to cruising. And I know for some of you that may be hard to believe and understand, and I can certainly understand that if you've never cruised before, you're probably not gonna take a cruise in the very, very near future, and I get that. But as I said, uh, cruisers are very loyal and, uh, and uh, there is some demand. I was looking at a, a survey on Cruise Critic, and it said that of about 4,000 cruisers that have bookings for 2020, 76% of them have opted to take a credit for cruise in 21 versus asking for a refund. So I thought that was uh, very, very telling. Um, and so um, as we continue to move forward for the next uh, six months, it will be about uh, working to navigate this, uh, this organization through where we're at, uh, assisting in, in reaching out to the, to the broader community and to see where we can assist and where we can fit in. And at the same time, uh, realizing, and trying to find that, I would call the financial balance between recognizing that we still have operations with people living on our properties and yet trying to balance out uh, the very, very limited uh, financial resources that we have in place. Um, someone's asked a question around, uh, is there anything that we've learned uh, through this whole process? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I think we've learned a lot. I, I, I know I have personally in terms of just, I guess, being not, not feeling the pressure to have everything thought through and having everything figured out and having to have an answer today 
for something that comes up, but just being mindful of being uh, very, very open to suggestions. And I can tell you that, you know, as we work through this, and, and, and right now the focus is on what I would call rescue. Um, and then as we look to recovery, I think that will be the opportunity for us to kind of look back and see what we, we could learn from this. I know there's also been some, you know, is there a question around, should we be looking at uh, minimizing uh, you know, crews coming into Victoria? And uh, I think we're going to see a natural evolution of that. I don't think we're going to see 21 come back to the 21 that we had, had forecasted a couple of years ago. Um, uh, I think there's going to be a lot that the cruise lines will learn through this process and how they will adapt. Um, and I do believe that there is a balance of, of, of recognizing the environmental impact of crews. And that's why we've taken the decision to continue with the shore power feasibility study and business case. And at the same time, recognizing the significant economic benefit the cruise brings. And I was talking uh, last week with a restaurant operator uh, down in the Johnson Street area. And uh, this, this operator was telling me how much they miss crews. And I was quite surprised because I didn't think the cruisers would necessarily stop into a local restaurant for dinner. And the operator was telling me that it's not necessarily the fact that we see people off of crews come into our restaurant. It's the fact that cruisers bring vibrancy and animation to the downtown area and to various parts of Victoria. And that really, that really, that, I, I thought that was a really good point to make is that it's not necessarily about the dollars into the doors and into the stores, but it's about the fact, the vibrancy and the people around in downtown that looks like, uh, uh, that, that brings some vibrancy to the area. So I think that's another area and benefit of cruise um, that we need to look at. Someone's also been asking around uh, how we've been looking at other areas uh, of, our, of, our, of our peers to look for revenue. The answer is yes. In fact, um, I've put together a team to look at alternate revenue streams for our peers and to see how they could be utilized uh, if in fact we see no, no crews in store for 2020. So yeah, we're working on that and, and more to come. Um, a little bit about about crews and the fact that there is some negativity and I'm I'm very well aware of that and I believe that uh, the cruise lines understand that um, I believe it's really important for the cruise lines to understand how communities feel about once they'll come back into their communities and that there is going to be some negativity there's going to be some anxiety and I know that uh, we are doing everything we can to impress upon our partners and the cruise lines um, that, uh, that they need to not only ensure their customers that it's safe to cruise, but they also need to do a lot to ensure the, and, and, and help us and tell the communities that once cruise comes back, that they've taken all the necessary steps to make sure that once cruise comes back, that it is safe for those passengers to get off and into our communities. And that's an area that I know I will be, along with, uh, with a, a lot of the team here, uh, focusing in on. And so um, I think, you know, as we're starting to see things open up, uh, you know, Fisherman's Wharf, the opening of the breakwater today and, and seeing the increase, you know, traffic down to Fisherman's Wharf, is a really positive thing. And, and, and I think it's important that for us as residents, uh, that we, we do what we can to help out these local businesses and, uh, and to help them come back. Um, I'd love to spend some money for an advertising program, but the reality is we have no money for that. Um, that said, we do have a very robust social media campaign uh, that's in place now and will be ongoing to help promote the various businesses that are down at Fisherman's Wharf and to encourage people to come down and to utilize them. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, some comments around, uh, you know, BC protocol of 50 or less group 
uh, gatherings. Yeah, that's going to have a, an impact upon the ability for cruise ships to come in. And it's also one of the reasons why we've taken the decision to close the, uh, the breakwater barge uh, for this year, because obviously, you know, that can't handle, uh, you know, to open it up for 50 or less doesn't make sense. And it's not something that we want to do. And I know in talking to the cruise lines, they're looking at how they are going to be able to accommodate and put in place social distancing measure, measures on board the cruise ships. And, um, you know, I look forward to seeing what happens there. Um, I think that, uh, you know, again, a question coming up around, around crews. And right now, I, I think our focus has been around working with the cruise lines to communicate the concerns around, around what, the, what the residents have around the safety of crews. And, and, and I've been doing, you know, I, I, I've been sending articles around the really good job that British Columbia has been doing, and especially Vancouver Island, the, the incredible job that's being done to flatten the curve. And I've been using that as a way to help educate our crews, uh, partners around why there is the, a heightened sense of awareness. But I can also tell you from talking to the cruise partners that Victoria is not alone. There are very, there are a lot of other communities right around the world that share uh, concerns around safety. Uh, but as we get into the fall and we learn about the safety measures, <coughs> excuse me, that the cruise lines are taking, uh, we'll communicate those out to the to the community and uh, and work to ensure that there is a, a good understanding of the protocols that are being put in place, uh, the steps that the cruise lines are taking to ensure that uh, uh, that cruise is safe. Uh, the last thing that I think we all want to have happen is cruise return in 2021. And we've got some folks out there with placards saying we don't want cruise here. I think we're going to learn a lot this summer how important cruise is to Victoria. And I think for a lot of us, how much it is missed. Um, you know, questions being asked around when do we see or forecast a return to what we had forecasted for 2021. And I think it's going to really take a couple of years. I, I really believe that. I think we're going to see a, a return in 21. There's no question that, but how, to what degree that looks like, it's really tough to say. The benefit we do have is that, well, right now we have birth requests in for 2021, but I don't think it's going to be prudent of us to take those numbers and that schedule that we have right now and say, oh, okay, well, that's what it's going to look like. I think that right now the cruise lines are looking at, you know, rejigging and reevaluating their itineraries. So I think it's fair to say that come November, December, um, we are going, we're, we'll get a pretty good idea of what 21 will look like. And again, if I had a crystal ball, um, I would say that 21 may look like what 2017, 2018 was. So I think we're going to be a couple of years behind uh, what we're looking at. But uh, as we talk to the cruise lines, um, they are all very, very committed to Alaska. Uh, there is talk about Biggie bringing more capacity than they had originally planned. So what we might see is a shift of, of bigger ships in place of smaller ships. So, so we'll have to wait and see. But as I said, I think that by the time the November, December of this year rolls around, we'll get a pretty good idea of what 2021 will look like. Uh, questions been asked around, uh, you know, as some of the newer ships are holding more capacity, do we foresee a limit of the number of cruise ships on weekends? Uh, the answer is that no. I think what we may see is that if you've got a ship that's capable of handling 4,000 passengers, the cruise lines may only book that to 60 or 75 percent. So I think the, the important part there is really looking at uh, the number of passengers that are on the ships as opposed to the number of ships coming in. Um, you know, uh, I think we'll, that's what we're going to see is perhaps larger ships, but fewer passengers on board. Um, 
Yeah, so a, a question has been come up around uh, how we can support uh, the Indigenous partnerships that we've got in place. And uh, one of the positive or one of the things we were looking forward to the most is we had entered into a partnership with Songhees Nation to um, build a kiosk and to help them promote their tourism business in the Inner Harbour. And um, we had funded through, uh, well, we gener of our of our revenue, one percent of our revenue is committed to uh, uh, working with both the Esquimalt Nation and Songhees Nation on economic activities. And we had a plan in place, and uh, funding was approved, still is approved, for them to build a kiosk and to help them uh, come back. And so we're in very close conversations with both nations around areas in which we can support them in economic development, whether it be in the Inner Harbour or in their nations or in other areas that they uh, want to focus in on. Um, I'm hearing and just reading around, uh, you know, folks with mobility issues uh, and uh, asking the question around uh, designated parking areas uh, down at the Breakwater District. And you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of, uh, I believe we do, uh, but you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure we capture that question and perhaps highlight uh, for you on our website where we have got some uh, some uh, parking spaces uh, down at down at the Breakwater District for people with mobility issues to park their cars so they can get out and uh, and uh, and enjoy uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the Breakwater District and, and get out and uh, onto the Breakwater. Um, also question around, uh, did we see any cruise ships come in? And the answer is no, we didn't have any cruise ships. Uh, we had lots that were planned. And uh, so uh, we did not see any cruise ships uh, this year. And as I said, uh, it remains to be seen if we will see any in, uh, in 2021. As I mentioned, uh, uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean uh, are hopeful that they may see uh, some sort of a season and excuse me from speaking to them uh, they're still keen to come back even if there's two or three weeks left of the season so obviously that's telling me and our organization how important it is to uh, for them to to keep going in Alaska. Um, also want to just comment to any of our commercial tenants uh, that are participating uh, I just want to be able to say to you that we are doing everything we can and looking through all of the various uh, subsidy programs, rent relief programs, as to how we can support you. Uh, we know it's important for you to continue to have your doors open and to be working and to be generating revenue and that's not lost on us as an organization. Uh, so, um, uh, as I mentioned, we, we are aware the Prime Minister made an announcement today regarding some adjustments and we're following that closely and uh, we'll, as soon as we get, you know, all the details sorted out, we'll make sure that we uh, communicate out to you what we can do. But, you know, don't wait for us to communicate out if there's some specific ideas or suggestions that you've got. If there's things that you think we're missing, please let us know, let me know. You can get a hold of me at CEO at gbha.ca, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to respond. Um, question around voters being discouraged from voting. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been kind of getting mixed signals on this. On the one hand, I'm seeing some notification around uh, people being discouraged to head out on their boats, but yet that I see that if you're going to be going out voting, make sure you know where you're going and don't really, you know, maybe head across the Gulf Islands or the San Juans, keep close to shore. So, uh, you know, our, our marinas continue to be open and we have staff here, although minimal staff, but we do have staff here. If someone does want to get away and come into the marina uh, for a day or two, we're certainly open and able to uh, take that on. Um, and so just waiting for any more questions that come in. Um, so, and a question also coming in from the uh, James Bay Neighborhood Association. 
and uh, just the reinforcing that we acknowledge uh, that businesses down at Fisherman's Wharf are important and we'll do everything we can to ensure that uh, you know, you're kept apprised of the notifications. And again, maybe what I'll do is I'll just tuck away a note to ensure that, uh, that you as a neighborhood organization are kept informed of the notifications that we are sending out. Question coming around, uh, other than crews, uh, you know, do we see areas of focus of all cruises on hold? And, 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 and the question is yes. Uh, we've always looked at how we could uh, diversify uh, so that this organization was not so reliant on crews. Um, and, you know, again, the reason why cruise is so important to us as an organization is that we are set up as a not-for-profit organization. And the surplus that we earn goes back into reinvesting back into the properties that we are responsible for stewarding. And those properties include the breakwater, uh, they include the Fisherman's Wharf, uh, they include the Lower Causeway, all the way, away, way around from Steamship Terminal, all the way around to Milestones. And these are all aging infrastructure that's going to need a lot of repair and replacement over the next coming years. And without crews and the money that we make from crews, uh, there is real no, you know, we're gonna have a challenge in sustaining those properties. And I know some people say, well, just get them back to the city. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't believe the city is gonna have the resources, financial resources to look after them as well. So I, again, I think it's finding a balance. Uh, but yes, we are looking at ways in which we can uh, diversify our business. Uh, we'll continue to pursue opportunities down in the Breakwater District, and we'll continue to pursue opportunities for perhaps non-crews at our peers. Um, from what I'm learning, it, it's a challenging one because sometimes you need you know, a couple of years in advance to get the word out that we have peers available, but then we're limited because these peers are only available really five or six months of the year, when typically we have crews in. So yeah, I would love nothing better for, than for us to be able to utilize the peers more uh, to see more revenue come in. Um, uh, we are looking at ways in which we can uh, make some enhancements to Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, we do have the Huron Pier closed. The Huron Pier is the dock at the west end of Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, it's the one that comes out to the fuel dock and uh, that's been closed down since last year. We had, we did have plans to uh, fix that wharf this year, but again, due to the lack of crews, we put most of our capital expenditures on hold. We've had to, so that's one pier that's not being used. But as we've looked at how do we replace that pier, we thought about, well, is there another business or something that could go on that pier uh, to generate additional revenue? So you know, we'll continue to look at, at avenues. And again, if you've got some ideas or suggestions, you know, don't hesitate to let me know. And again, feel free to reach out to me at ceo at gbha.ca. And there's no crazy idea and we'll take a, we'll take a really good look for that. A uh, question coming in around uh, the recycling area at Ogden Point. I think it's being referred to as the transfer station, uh, transfer station, but an area where marshalling is done of, uh, of recycling coming off the crews. And the answer is that right now it's obviously closed because there is no business from crews. Uh, but when crews does return, uh, most yes, uh, that business will come back and uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to support um, the efforts of that. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, great question around volunteer efforts related to our organization. Uh, yeah, we do actually uh, rely on a lot of volunteers for, through Destination Greater Victoria uh, to help guide the many different uh, visitors that come in off the pier. So if you're interested in volunteering uh, and supporting uh, not just us, but Destination Greater Victoria and our community at, uh, at large. Uh, certainly reach out to Destination Greater Victoria. I know that their volunteer program is shut down for this year, 
but as tourism returns uh, next year, I'm sure that's an area where if you're interested, you could uh, get involved. Um, got a bit of a question here around managing the ramps on efficient means of wharf. I, I would take that, that that's, uh, are we looking at how do we manage the flow? And the answer is yes. Uh, we'll continue to monitor uh, the traffic and the flow down efficient means of wharf. Uh, we have considered whether we need to put, you know, one way ramps in and we'll keep a, a really good, uh, really good, eye, really good focus in on that. Um, question coming up uh, regarding one of our partners uh, that we were sorry to see go, uh, B2B Vacations. Uh, and um, currently uh, the, that, uh, that vessel is still there and that property is still on a sublease to B2B. Uh, once B2B signal to us that they are concluding their lease, then most likely what we'll do is we will work with the province and uh, do an RFP to determine the best use of that particular uh, float. Um, question coming in uh, regarding uh, if Transport Canada uh, were to allow cruise ships to land after July 1, you know, would we decide to accept them? And uh, that's a question that I would want to take to our board uh, for our board to be supportive of that decision. Uh, as I've said all along, uh, I have phenomenal confidence in, in the leaders, the health of the leaders that are leading us uh, all in the situation at the federal level and provincial level. And um, uh, I will take the lead, uh, we will take the lead and, and, and our recommendation back to the board uh, based, on, uh, based on their input. And you never know, there could be a modification to that particular order. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see as to, uh, to uh, whether, uh, whether crews will come back. I think what will be really important for, for this organization is what are the safety protocols that will be put in place and not just the safety requirements that Transport Canada or Health Canada through Transport Canada will put into place. Uh, but I think for me, uh, as the CEO of this organization, uh, it'll be really important for me to understand and to be confident of the safety protocols that the cruise ships and the cruise lines have gotten into place so that I can be confident that once the ships get here, that everyone is safe and that uh, they are not a, a risk to the residents of Victoria. Um, with regards to uh, new hires, you know, really tough to say. I, I have to say that I don't think we're going to be looking at any new permanent hires in the next couple of years. Um, we've had to take the very difficult decision of temporarily laying off 23 staff. So I know that I have a lot of individuals that are eager to come back uh, when we see our business return. But as always, uh, if you're interested in careers at GBHA, we do have a, a space on our website. Uh, so feel free to continue to come back to our website and, uh, and look at that. Um, question coming back uh, around uh, what's the status of home porting uh, for, for crews? Um, well, I guess for us as an organization, uh, that was one of the real highlights of this particular cruise season in that we were looking forward to Canards Queen Elizabeth doing what I call a home port light. That means they were going to uh, take on a number of passengers here in Victoria uh, and, and cruise up to Alaska and drop them off. And I think this was the start of a goal that we had many years ago to become a home port. Uh, the bad news is, or I guess the good news is, Kennard are still committed to this itinerary. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to that coming back in 2021. So uh, I'm hopeful that that will continue uh, to move forward. So I see I've got about another 30 seconds left. Um, I do want to thank everybody for taking the time to join me and this organization on this uh, on this call. As I said, you know we're we're working through this as best we can, and uh, if it feels like we don't have answers to your questions, you know we're working through those answers to or questions to get back to you as soon as we can. So again, well, I think we'll do this again. This has been a lot of fun. The technology has worked. Uh, this old dog has learned a few new things. 
and uh, so stay in tune. So again, thank you everyone uh, for participating. And again, if there's any questions that you've got that I haven't been able to answer, please reach out to me at CEO at gvha.ca. Take care everyone, and we'll speak soon.